Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, if people have been watching Bridging Heaven and Earth consistently, which I guess a lot of people do all across the country, I guess they see the different shows at different times. You know, lately we've been talking a lot about the tremendous levels of conflict in the world. And I always say, well, if I didn't tell you what date this show was being shot or, or when we were taping it, would you know what date it was from, from the amount of conflict? And most of the time the answer is no, because seemingly there's always a tremendous amount of conflict going on. In one place or another, there's a level of, of war, there's a level of famine, there's a level just of, of repression, a, a level of disharmony that's so great that it just, it's, it's so obvious to us. And if I told you we were taping this show, on March 21st, 2003, and it was the week that the American-Iraqi-British war, whatever, had begun, would it, in a way, would it make a difference? It would in the sense that maybe more bombs are being dropped this week. Maybe there's more suffering in one part of the world than another part of the world. But really, what, what is peace? What is the peace that we talk about on Bridging Heaven and Earth? What is the peace that all the spiritual teachers and masters have come into this world to talk about? When they talk about peace, are they talking about the absence of war only? That we're not torturing and killing and maiming and bombing each other and strapping bombs to ourselves and going on buses? Of course, that's a start. That would be good if we didn't do that to each other. But wouldn't it even be better if we knew the love that we all are, if we knew the connection between us all? Wouldn't that be even better? Wouldn't it be truly what we all want if we knew that oneness, if we knew that truth, if we knew that love? The love that Jesus talked about, the love that Krishna talked about, the love that Buddha talked about, the love that the roots of all the religions are about, is about that love. We are all the same love, and we can know that. In a human body, when we know that infinite, when we know what people call God, or all the different names for it, and all the different religions, it feels like love. And it feels like we're all connected to each other, and all the other beings, and pieces of, of incredibleness on this planet and forever and in this galaxy and in this infinite universe in a sense so for all of us I mean is it not time to recommit again and again and again and again to knowing that love and not seeing the differences the differences are so small in, in light of that connection in light of that knowing in light of that oneness in light of that love in light of that god and we can know it in a human life and we can know it now so whenever you're watching the show maybe that war will be over but will there not be oppression will there not be tyranny certainly we hope so hopefully if you see this show in a week the world will have an epiphany and, and and we'll all know that truth. But for each of us, the question is, do we know the love? And we talked about that a lot on the last show. And in our hearts, we need to know it. So tonight we have somebody as a guest tonight whose life is dedicated to knowing that truth and knowing that love and sharing it. Kathy Heath has been a spiritual teacher and a healer for many years. She's an energetic facilitator. Uh, she's known as a communicator from the realms of the deities. She teaches how to translate the highest loving potential into everyday life. And don't we want that? Or would we rather see the differences in color, in religion, in sexual preference, in countries, and have all these arbitrary boundaries, and have holy wars and fight, and there's, there's enough God to go around? So, you know, Kathy's with the Titan, and then we also have some incredible videos, these sacred visionary art music videos that uh, 
a good friend of Bridging Heaven Earth, David, who's head of the Light Party, uh, gave to us. It was part of this uh, big festival he held in San Francisco, and they're beautiful videos. So again, we're together, we're here, and the opportunity is for all of us to take it another step, to make that commitment one more time, to try to drop into that love a little deeper, a little more sure, and take it out into this world and bring that love out. Just be that love, be love in motion, and then we'll see what happens in the world. So as we normally do, join me in a short meditation, then we're gonna have the visionary art video, and uh, Kathy's gonna be with us, and it's, it's an opportunity again for us all. So please join me in a short meditation. I, we really don't have to keep hurting each other. It's really not necessary. And whatever reasons we think for doing it over and over again, we've got to see deeper, more, fuller. We've got to know the love. So we're going to start tonight's show with the sacred visionary art video. It's a music video. It's from David and the Light Party. It's from the sacred visionary art and music festival. He held. It's an annual festival in San Francisco. Many of the guests who have been on Bridging were uh, featured at, the, at that festival. Uh, we had Catherine Andrews, Ali Minor, Leszek Forchek, Reagan Mendenhall, uh, Jonathan Quinton, Bonnie Bell, David Todd. They've all been guests on the show. Their art is extraordinary. And the first video is going to be two people who weren't on the show, but I thought you'd like to see them, Daniel Holman and Aya. So, the video.
I were on the set with Kathy. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. So you've had an interesting story about how, like, this world of the love I was talking about opened up to you. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess it was kind of interesting. I found out I had cancer, and um, I was back east, and I was walking through my, my, I was meeting my folks in Maryland, and walking through this grotto area, Mother Seton's place, which I had never heard of, but my folks being Catholic, where they were really excited about stopping and they were lighting candles for me across the country anyway so but they took my daughter who at the time was two up to the chapel and I just walked around the grotto and I saw this picture of um, Our Lady of Guadalupe and uh, it was just being very contemplated because it was during the Gulf War at that time and um, is there always a war? <laughs> just, my god it's brutal out here yeah and so I just um, I heard a voice, and I recognized it as a person that my family knew. Mm, he was a psychiatrist in our area, very well known, and he had a very distinctive way of speaking, so I, I couldn't mistake it. And uh, he just told me that there was a lot for me to learn, and um, it was it was like I had this rush of energy coming through my body. If a computer could feel, I guess it would feel like a computer having information downloaded to it. Well, and um, that's your hard drive work, though, <laughs> <laughs> as they say. A lot. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so after um, after this rush of energy, which lasted for quite a while. Quite a while, meaning an oh, hour a day For me, it month. seemed at least two months, but I'm sure it was a couple minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, literally, seriously. And then um, I just, uh, it was like I had an incredible amount of peace inside of myself. And it was like I was looking over the whole world and just understood there was a bigger picture. And I just started crying and crying and crying. And I walked down and saw my folks and they were crying because my daughter, who was only two at the time, had picked up this beautiful colored leaf and had shown it to them and said, Mommy's really sick. She needs our prayers. And we didn't know at that time, or she didn't know at the time that I had cancer. Wow. So, um, it's a big psychic day for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> wow. the whole family. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it just started the process. I went back home afterward and um, I found out that the woman that picked me up from the airport um, was a very dear friend of Vaughn's, the man that appeared to me in the grotto. and. Um, so I told her about the experience, and she said, Kathy, what you don't know is before Vaughn died, he told his wife that he wanted to visit two places on earth. One was Bethlehem, and one was Mother Seton's place, because he had been there before and felt it was one of the most spiritual places he had visited. So um, when I went back home, I had the surgery and went through the treatments, and so every night he came to me and started teaching me things and but I had, I had a really hard time believing that I was talking to a dead person <laughs> so a dead psychiatrist yeah I'm talking I thought it. you needed a live psychiatrist <laughs> to talk holy Christ what, <laughs> why can't I get a live psychiatrist it was probably cheaper than yeah. That. yeah at least I didn't have to pay the $120 right, an hour holy Christ. <laughs> and you were laying down anyhow so yeah what the perfect, heck right? <laughs> but um so he he just started um, proving to me over a two-week period to the degree that I just could not distrust it. Like how? Uh, he would ask me to go to his wife and give her information that only he would and she would understand that they, the two of them shared together. So I got the gumption and called his wife and said, uh, Louise, Did I she been, know, was he spiritual? He, was, they, he went to Mass every morning. And the other thing I found out about is that he went to Mass um, at the church in our town that, um, and he sat right in front of the statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe. He wow. did a lot of, I guess, practice and prayers to her because he had gone down to Mexico and learned a lot about that vision. Wow. So, which I, I found out later but from Louise. So, but anyway, she, um, she hesitated for a little bit, but the information that he gave me 
to tell her she realized could only have been known by him. And then the other thing that happened is that he had a friend who was a monk in the Santa Ynez Valley, and she told him, this monk about what had happened. And he said, well, believe Kathy, because Vaughn has also come to me. And this was a Catholic monk, it was, yeah, so. So he gave me a lot of messages to give to her and then to other friends, personal messages. But then I thought, nah, this is just still too weird. So I thought maybe I was telepathically communicating to these people. That was easier for me to believe than still talking to a dead person. Mm. So what he did was start to predict things that happened very quickly that were very unusual. So, Give me a for instance. We have this friend whose husband owns um, a lot of nurseries in the area. And um, uh, he had me call her up and say, just be really patient with your husband because he's going through, he's going to be going through a very difficult time. Um, he will lose thousands of dollars worth of his plants, his seedlings. And so she <laughs> wasn't really sure about all of this and said, oh, okay, Kathy, when I called her. But um, then two days later, she called me really early in the morning and a freak storm had come in through the night and blown out some of the panels in the nurseries and they estimated they had lost about ten thousand dollars worth of plants mm. seedlings wow. yeah so just really unusual things that i just i mm. just i wouldn't have known about so that's one example and then they uh, he had me um talk to another woman who um, and tell her not to worry she was going to have a bouncing bruiser of a baby boy and I gave that information to her mother and her mother gave her that information at dinner and the this woman ran out of the restaurant crying and the mother called me and said what was this information about well her daughter called me later and said that she'd been trying to get pregnant for a long time and she hadn't been able to and a psychic had told her when she was younger that she was never going to be able to have children so she was really worried about that. Yeah. So a few days later, she had a pregnancy test and found out she was pregnant, yeah. which she had been, she, she had just given up. So, so you're in the process of being convinced that this information right. mm -hmm. and these teachings are of value. Well, first he had to convince me that there was something more than what I could feel and, and see. So, and then he started with the teachings. Actually, he introduced me to a woman who would sit by my bed at night. I was really uncomfortable and I couldn't take any pain medication. So she would sit by my bed and knit. And uh, we called her Granny. And she w would be the one that would get me up in the middle of the night and teach me lots of things. So, And then it was just an evolutionary process. Um, they left, but before they left, they took me into this very, very deep meditation. And it was, um, I saw this worm crawling across the lawn, but it was a huge lawn, and it took forever for this worm. And all the, the birds were flying, and it, it was just very, very, very arduous for this worm to cross all this length of lawn and then go up the tree and out the branch and then it spun its cocoon and then it was the proverbial butterfly. butterfly and as the butterfly was released they said you're ready to fly and so then these energies started coming into my body even more and I just started having these spontaneous things happen so, like what well one of the first things that happened is I was over at a friend's house and we were in the in her backyard. She lived out at the beach, and there were all these trees and uh, lots and lots of birds in these trees. And behind her was a, a grocery store, and the trash trucks were picking up trash. And she was off the freeway, so there was a lot of traffic noise. And um, this information just started coming through, and my voice softened, and. Um, it this information that came through was from a presence that was talking about peace and finding peace in one's heart and then just asking that we all go inside our hearts and find that quiet 
And as soon as I said quiet, all the noise stopped. The birds, the trash, trucks, the traffic, it just stopped. <laughs> Has it come back? <laughs> Thank God, the whole area. <laughs> It's, the well, land it's values in the area, <laughs> did they go up or down? It's, there's no noise here. It's freaky. Just one little pocket. Oh, this one little backyard. <laughs> the quiet here. And, and then it lasted for how long? Until, until I started speaking again. I see. And then it just started. And she, she, she heard the silence too. Oh yeah, she still talks about it. In fact, there were several people there, but she, she is now in Albuquerque, but she still talks to... She had a move. It's too quiet my there. God, it was, you know, turn the TV on, no sound comes out, and nothing. It's brutal here. Yeah, so that was one of the things that happened. And, but that really, really sort of woke me up and thought, oh, what's happening here? So then I started networking with people and asking asking a lot of questions and then I was introduced to a man who I feel has really been an extraordinary teacher to me James Kent and he um, lived See the fellow from Santa Cruz he, yes uh-huh he lived at the uh, ashram in Oakland the city yoga ashram the Muktananda. he studied under Swami Muktananda and um, Baba Muktananda taught him how to give Shakti pot which was something that um, Baba Muktananda um, could um, facilitate. And it's a very powerful, dynamic, energetic um, healing quality tool. So, and James just spent a lot of time teaching me and working with me and introduced me to other people. And then I was introduced to some Tibetan Buddhist Lamas, and they understand. They understand many, many of these things. And uh, His Holiness he uses an oracle. Um, that's how His Holiness was His able. Holiness, the Dalai, the Dalai Lama. Lama. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Everybody's got a different holiness. Yeah. For us. <laughs> yeah. Can't assume anything around here. So um, that's how actually he escaped safely out of Tibet, as the oracle gave him instructions. So. So the uh, several lamas, I, I really wanted to have all of this checked out. I really wanted to know where, what, what this was about. And so one of the lamas explained to me that um, he felt there is a deity known as Tara, and the Tibetans believe that she is the mother of all Buddhas, and everything feminine is a manifestation of her. And he, he just felt that I knew her. And then another Lama just explained to me that um, the energy and everything comes from the realms of the deities, as they call it. So. Now, what do they mean by that? Well, that um, the, when I go inside myself and, and really go in deeply, I feel that I connect with the oneness. And from that point, um, all things exist. So that's sort of what they, I believe, mean by from the realms of the deities. The deities contain all things. Tara is a manifestation in feminine form, but she contains all things. They, in fact, they break her down to 21 aspects. So, you know, it's just, um, yeah. But I believe that that source is the oneness that you speak about. That's where we all meet. That's who where we all come from. Yes, yes. And we all, if we practice and are sincere and we go inside ourselves, we all are that and we're not separate. So when we're in that space, I'm not separate from you or anyone else. So when an individual comes and asks a question, and we're coming from that space. There's no separation, so there's the answer. <laughs> okay, show's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We've got it. <laughs> you know, it is interesting because I mean, like, you know, we do a talk show, and then there's nothing to talk about because there's an experience. Right. I mean, 
you know, ultimately people want to have the experience of that truth, that knowing, that oneness, and all the words, ultimately, unless you're having that experience, are, are hollow. Right. You know, it's like sitting in meditation, you know, you have the right form and you're back straight and you're on the right pillow, but you're mm -hmm. thinking of the ball game or the whorehouse or, you know, <laughs> your bills or, you know, whatever you're thinking about. You know, and, you, you know, and then, you know, that's not exactly what people would call meditation. <laughs> Not most circles, I of course have different. But, uh, so, did they teach you meditation techniques to have that experience over and over again? No, it, no. Going, get, get, get out of here! <laughs> My God! No, not really. But what what happens is when I <laughs> when um, when I would go in it. Uh, I would just be there. I mean, I would say my, my prayers. I would hold an intention that all things are in the highest living context. Uh -huh. And then in, So did they teach you that as a technique? Yes, yes, oh, they did I do see. that. Okay. But there wasn't any really training. In fact, there were several psychics and whatever you, however you want to label them that were giving workshops and things. And I would want to go and always, always, always something would happen at the last minute that stopped me from going. And so what I was told then when I go into my own guidance is that I, I wasn't... Um, you got a direct shot. Yeah, so why try to be like this person over here or that person over there when it's just about me going inside myself and learning from that space. So. <laughs> well, it makes things easier. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no intermediary. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, and tools and teachers are helpful, but at some right. point, right. you know, right. they're not always there, and, you know, you can't always sit in meditation, but that experience of love is mm -hmm. is in you. Right, it's inside of all of us, and when we go into that space, then we're, again, we're in that oneness, I, I believe. And so, just... We'll, we'll show the video in a couple of minutes. Why don't you just start, start talking a little bit about how you started, you know, experiencing that and then starting to take it out, you know, and, and to share that with people and to teach and to, to be a healer with that love and that energy. Well, I believe that I see so many people that sit in the details of their life and just look at habits and patterns that they're in and they have a, we have we have a natural tendency to chastise ourselves or judge ourselves but when we can really look at the bigger bigger picture oftentimes there's there's a there's an understanding and awareness that if we hold about ourselves for instance maybe there's a pattern that we've carried over into this lifetime from a past life and if we can understand those, then we can hopefully take ourselves out of judgment and bring compassion and look at those aspects of ourselves much more compassionate and say, oh, that's that human part of me surfacing, of course, because of this. So if we can hold ourselves in a bigger picture, and that's what I support people in understanding very specifically about who they are in in a, a specific way whether there's a past life pattern whatever it is but the main point is to take ourselves out of judgment and just sit with compassion and we're human we're people seek enlightenment but what is enlightenment do we are we devoid of sadness are we no longer going to have fear or anger i don't believe so i think that's part of the human component and if we can just sit and be the observer of these human parts of us surfacing in fear and anger. Some of these are really protective measures for us. And if we can be the observer and meet ourselves with compassion and knowing in that moment we're doing the very best thing that we can do, then we're not separating any aspect of ourselves. Okay, yeah, maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that you know, when we come back. Okay, so we'll show the second uh, sacred uh, visionary art uh, music video. Uh, this one has the artists of Josephine Wall, uh, Allie Minor, and Catherine Andrews. As I said, Allie and Catherine have been guests on the show, and their art is really beautiful. So we'll see that, and then we'll come back and talk to Kathy some more.
happy. So when did you start like taking this information? How long did it take you from the time you first started, you know, getting this information to the time that you were guided or knew that you should make this available to people? Well, it was probably about five years because it, it still took me a while to trust it and trust, trust myself. And I'm still in the process. I'm still in the process of working on myself and um, understanding myself. But it took me about five years before I started just sitting with people and and uh, and doing whatever it is that I do. So, um, but I just saw how people responded. And when I go inside this place, it's the most loving experience. And to translate that to others, to help support them and seeing themselves from that loving place, really translate. So, I mean, would you say it's some form of counseling or? Yes, and some people have many different um, ways to describe it. Um, I believe that there is a definite energetic influence. I've been told that as much as there is a verbal exchange, there's an energetic exchange also. And so some people see it as many different things. Um, if it's channeling energy, I don't know what, what, how they want to well, however they want to describe it. it. But I believe it's just from that ultimate place of source, from that divine place where we all meet in oneness. And from that point, though, all information exists. So whether you're working in, and there's no, there's no limit in time. So whether you're looking at past lives to understand why you're in a certain pattern or, or your life looks like that Groundhog Day type movie, over and over. Uh, yes, yeah. Right. right. So, um, and then there's other facets to this. I have um, I work with um, a person who knows kinesiology very, very well. He has mastered those skills. And we do tandem sessions where we I literally look at a, a person's body and I can tell whether that person is um, deficient in certain things if like what things? well I mean, if like there's vitamins minerals it, or sometimes that will come up for them if they're um, if there's certain organs that are uh, let's say stagnated in energy and they could be supported through nutrition or energy or if there's an emotion there and most often if there's stagnated energy there's an emotion held in the body and so we access the information around that talk about the emotion again it might be past life influence whatever and then um, uh, Michael is able to release this through different modalities that he's studied and, and been trained in. But you also, I mean, if, if you do solo sessions, if you I fly absolutely, solo, yes, yes, yes. I mean, you can also energetically move that energy and move through it. Yes, um, it's a, it's a really a different process. It's a, um, a dynamic pro process when we're in the tandem session because Michael has the facilitating tools and he also has an energetic. Quality. Also, I feel that oftentimes when I go into these energies, I have a tendency to not be very grounded. And so he has a very supportive grounding influence. And, um, and that translates too. But you also teach workshops. I mean, in mm -hmm. the workshops, yes. Yes, there isn't workshops. a specific like healing for one person. There are groups of people. Correct. Correct. And how does that work? What do you do there? Well, we usually just go in and give teachings. We um, oftentimes will just go inside, and there'll be certain teachings about whatever is current in that moment. Um, uh, oftentimes, we're giving teachings around the ego, and the egoic structure, and what that can look like, what that can feel like, how we experience that, and how we can bring the ego into balance. It's not about wanting to get rid of the ego. It's about seeing that the ego can be in partnership to us. It's not about separating ourselves anymore. And oftentimes I find that people want to say, oh no, I have to get rid of my ego. But that's not it at all. It's to understand that the ego has been a, a protector of ours and how we can work with it and coordinate with that. And so that we're in the experience of the totality of who we are rather than separating us. Further. And would so it be do, that for each person, would it be different? I mean, like one person's floor is another person's ceiling kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, there's, it depends upon the individual and what the individual is working with. The, the egoic aspect may surface into 
fears and, and things that are unique to that individual. So the point of it is to give it t tools and to literally support us in our everyday lives. We can have etheric teachings and these are wonderful and we can have these huge loving, ex divine, blissful experiences, but we're in human bodies and how do we translate that into our everyday life? Go ahead. <laughs> Tell all the millions of people watching. I'm sure some of them can use a little hint every now and then. In well, the war torn areas we live in. That's, yeah. Well, what, what we do is, is support in giving individuals tools to use so that when they're in struggle and when they're in pain, they can reconnect with this totalness of who they are. Is there one tool that you could you know, offer to the to the multitudes watching Bridging Heaven and Earth well, all one around tool, the world? Yeah. One tool, I, I, I just feel that what's so important is that we get out of the judgment of ourselves and then we can do that and meet ourselves with compassion as we were talking before. We can spread that to everybody else in our lives. So one tool, it's not a new one, but going in being the objective observer, watching ourselves, stepping back and watching ourselves in anger or in fear. But what we do is we have to be conscious enough to say, oh, when that starts surfacing, oh, this is fear, this is anger, identifying with that and saying, okay, this is this egoic aspect of myself that's surfacing and just view it with compassion and love and say, speak to ourselves, speak to that human aspect as though, let's say, God or Goddess would speak to us. God, Goddess wouldn't judge us. God, Goddess would say, oh, of course that human part is reacting because there's just such a limited perspective being held in that moment. And in that, then, you release the charge, you release the resistance of that fear or anger, of that experience. In releasing that resistance, then it's easier to come from that divine perspective, let's call it. And how do you create that gap? I mean, a lot of times, you know, we're so overwhelmed by our fears and our hurts and our uncertainties. and. That, you know, it's not so, you know, it's, it's like the old joke that's easy for you. <laughs> you know, how do you have this objective observer? How, what's the tool to separate out from your fear? And not that I'm afraid, but that there is fear in this human body they call Kathy or Alan mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. multitudes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, the most important thing is to remember intent. So if you can just hold intention first, because energy follows intention and just start holding the intention that you're that we start developing a relationship or, with ourselves from a compassionate place that we start learning so you have to want to and that yeah, has absolutely. to be you like in to. your heart that yes. that is a, a yes. prayer of yes. mine is, and whether it's a spoken prayer or an unspoken prayer right and if you flub up the point is is not to judge yourself and say oh, shucks i missed that opportunity because believe me there'll be more opportunities down right. the road for you but just start being more conscious and oftentimes i tell people you know there's little pop-ups that they use on the, the music videos or the shows if you could just see that as soon as fear or, or anger see it as a pop-up and play with it don't be too serious because then 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 there's struggle in that mm -hmm. but play with it and just the most important thing is just to be mm, committed to some degree that this is what you want to start doing. To, to because the goal is to know the love. I mean, it's not the Absolutely. goal is to separate and watch things objectively. Right. But it's to to right. experience. Right. The fullness of who you right. are. Right. And as soon as you start practicing this and stepping into this more and more, you'll see that as soon as that fear or anger surfaces you'll be conscious enough to identify with it, step back from it, and then it immediately dissipates. You're not contributing to it. You're not in adding energy to it. And then the situation that you were either fearful or angry about dissipates. And you are just naturally then back into that compassionate, loving place. So it, it takes a bit of practice, but it works. Mm -hmm. So, in, in because we're using words, because this is a talk mm -hmm. show, what would you say are like, you know, the two or three messages that the information you've gotten that would be 
you know, the most important thing to have compassion for yourself would be obviously mm -hmm. somewhere at the top of the list, right? Yeah. What would some of the others be? Well, again, stepping out of judgment and holding yourself in compassion. Because from that perspective, then, there's many things that happen in the states of compassion. It, one comes to a greater sense of understanding of oneself. And in releasing oneself from those judgments, then then we can hold the bigger picture for other people too and understand that maybe they have behaviors that are irritating but but it's okay they have human aspects and then that gets translated that that is shared with everybody else and everybody else sees that you have that potential and see and they watch and see how you do this and handle yourself and then they want to know how do you do this? How do you stay in this peaceful spa space when your world is tumbling down? And I believe that the greatest responsibility we have to our world is first to come to that peace inside of ourselves and, and be happy. Just be as happy as we can be and, and just love ourselves as much as we can. And then we can just spread that everywhere and dedicate it to to these areas that are in strife and struggle but really allow ourselves to be happy in this world as it is but we can't do that unless we are happy with ourselves as we are no matter what yeah i mean we really have to look at ourselves you know mm -hmm. and see in a sense what the human condition is right you know the vastness of the human condition and what an extraordinary experiment it is here mm -hmm. and that it basically hasn't been easy for anybody in some ways mm -hmm. and that we all have those human characteristics that you know pop up and mm -hmm. pop down mm -hmm. and pop around mm -hmm. our scientists are talking about dark matter and such and that they believe that there's just a very small percentage that is actual physical and the rest is dark matter and within dark matter exists that energy that moves all things in our galaxies and if we can break that down and see ourselves in that and and use that as an opportunity to understand we're we're all the same whether we're looking at a galaxy whether we're looking at our universe or whether we're looking at ourselves it's all the same but when we start breaking it down like that then we start finding that we have the capacity to hold this bigger picture and we don't get lost in the details and the details that continually separate us from ourselves and separate us from our potential our highest loving potential we can do the details but we just don't identify with them right. really attached to them they don't yeah they don't we don't, aren't so immersed into them that that's all that we become we understand that yes these aspects surface this fear and anger the detail that of going in and having to wash dishes or scrub toilets but it's not the only thing we identify with when we know that as we are that householder as we are the banker as we are this as we experience fear these are just all aspects of who we are but there are many 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 more aspects and we don't get lost in the details of the fact that that's the only thing that we are <laughs> so I mean what, what you're doing in a sense is like creating a space where like the infinite can be seen because Absolutely. everybody has it. Yes. it just, yes. So it's like unwinding the onion or some some right. semblance of something to create mm -hmm. a time and a space in human time and space to know, oh, I am infinite. Right. And we all express that, I believe, in different ways. I, I believe that we're, we oftentimes um, realize ourselves through certain aspects. So if you look at uh, the different deities and in saints they all express a certain aspect and I believe that that's what we do also so in experiencing these different aspects then again it's really important though that we understand it's just an aspect and there's many other aspects for us to learn about too but that's how we can start developing a relationship with ourselves we may have a relationship with a saint or an angel or a deity and we may be able to sit and feel into how we feel about that presence, that energy. And to the degree that we can feel that, then we own that for ourselves. And that's what I support people in doing, is realizing 
themselves in that way, but not get lost into only identifying right, identifying with, with a certain Buddhism or a certain religion or a certain country or a certain mm -hmm. sect or mm -hmm. your teachings or correct. No, the whole point is to support the individual in a way that they blossom. I, I may have energies coming through my body and etc. and may express it a certain way through my system, but how does it express it through your system? And it's exciting to be able to encourage the individual to learn how to realize that for themselves. To, to be their own flower, yes, to be their own yes. bloom. And give them really specific dynamic tools to help them realize that. So it's not just sitting here and talking. It's, it's a literal teaching process. Okay, let's do this and let's do that. And step by step by step. And all the while seeing that individual's highest loving potential and all the while supporting that individual in that potential. And people really like to be supported in that potential, oh, obviously. Absolutely. How many, and we need, you know, I mean, that seems to be what we really need. How many people do we have in our lives that can support us? unconditionally and can see that really these aspects that surface are just that that's all and the, what how do we not know that in a past life we've been crucified and etc and so we contract when we're asked to to be out there or whatever it is so if we we have a bigger understanding of who we are then we're much more capable so at different times you might even help people explore like past lives or not to give the mind something to do but to be very purposeful in understanding who they are in the moment yes because our minds have so much to do as it is and they're they can pretty become, busy yeah. <laughs> pretty busy those little minds but oftentimes it's helpful to understand a past life experience so that when we understand that there's a pattern in our life that is from a past life experience. So there's a pattern and energetic influence that supports us in this pattern that is a limiting experience for us. Then we can come to an experience of compassion around ourselves in that understanding. And it feels a lot better. Yes, yes. And it feels a lot lighter. Yes. It, and then we get yes. lighter and lighter and yes. lighter. And then we can forgive ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So. And then the other thing that uh, I believe is really important is, again, having very specific tools. Because it's not about just understanding this, but it's about, okay, what if I am in this situation? What do I do then? And then if there's a tool for that individual to use, it makes it much easier. And also it gives the mind something to do. And even so, at some point we want to be in the place where, like, we don't want to even separate ourselves with a tool that we've become. Absolutely, that that's, know the point. That, yeah, that's the point. To know that and be natural in that experience. The so, tool is just the bridge to, to heaven, heaven and earth. earth. And that's it. <laughs> that's great. So yeah, the show's coming to an end again. You know, it's, you know, do we know the love? You know, there are a lot of ways, there are a lot of tools, there are a lot of teachers. But ultimately, in each of our lives, we need to know the love. So, you know, if you want any information about Kathy, the workshops or teachings, uh, sessions, counseling, you know, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. Uh, That's Alan, 805-687-2053. You know, again, it's an opportunity for us all. It's an opportunity for us all. Whenever you're watching or hearing or this show is being made available to you, to, to go deeper, to know the love, and to be in harmony with what we are. So good night, God bless you.